Hi everybody and welcome to Truck King. Today's an exciting day because that just showed up here at Truck King HQ. That is the brand new Yamaha or Yamaha R-Max 1000. Now in this video, I'm gonna do a full walk around. We're gonna dig into all of the specs and the details on this machine. If you want to see mud flying and jumps, come back in the future because we're gonna do a full review. But for now, let's do the walk around and really see what makes this thing special. So right off the top, we just have to talk about styling. This R-Max really looks a world apart from the old Wolverine X2 or the Wolverine X2 on which it is based. I can put up a side-by-side -side comparison here, but yeah, Yamaha really went all out on the styling. And once again, it just looks angrier and angrier. This has been a trend in side-by-sides for a couple years now. Every time you release a new model, it better look more pissed off than the last model. And I definitely think this R-Max looks pissed off. Another thing you might have noticed off the top is that this machine is big, bigger than the Wolverine X2. Now the stance width is still listed at 64 inches, but the overall width of this machine is actually listed at 66.1 inches, and that's because the bodywork and the fenders there are just so wide. Now right here, I should mention what is new about this machine as compared to an X2, and the answer is basically everything. This is a new frame, a new engine, new suspension, new brakes. So this is not just a, you know, heavily revamped X2. It is basically a brand new model. Now I mentioned new engine. Well, let's go back and take a look. And at the, I'll also show off while we look the dump bed. So yes, one of this machine's claim to fame is that it still has a dumping bed here on the rear end which of course is a big deal for anyone who wants an adventure machine for trail riding, but then also wants to do some work with it as well. So there she is right down there. That is the brand new heart of this R-Max 1000. It is a parallel twin engine with dual overhead cams and it's putting out 108 horsepower. Now, while we're back here, we can also take a look at the suspension because you have such good access to it with the bed up. So there's actually two different suspension kind of setups, two different shock setups you can get. We have these Fox Performance Series shocks that have a few different adjustable settings by using this quick switch right up here. You have three, one, two, three to adjust your stiffness. So here in the rear end of our two seat model, we have just over 16 inches of travel while up front you have 14.2 inches of travel. And uh, that is a serious amount of suspension travel that's gonna help to swallow up things out on the trail. Now I mentioned we have those Fox shocks. There is also a brand new on the fly adjustable shock you can get in the R-Max, which you can adjust from a switch inside the cabin, but we do not have those on our model. Now we can look at the tires. So that is a set of 30 inch Maxxis carnivores. Now these are not the standard tires on this model. These come on the XTR special edition, which is what you are looking at right here. So we get this set of 30 inch carnivores and uh, these tires are absolutely beastly, not just because of, you know, the grip, but just the size of them. Getting 30 inch tires on side by sides these days is absolutely amazing. The other thing that the XTR package brings is a standard 4,500 pound worn winch. Always appreciated, nice to get from the factory. Now, another thing you might've seen by now are the lights. We do have updated lights here. You have those LEDs up there for that super cool look. And then you have the proper headlights down below. They are two-stage headlights. You can see them working right here. And I mean, I haven't put them to the test in the dark, but uh, it looks like a serious lighting setup on this machine as well. Let's quickly peel the hood off of this R-Max and you can see what's underneath. Of course, the engine's in the back, so that leaves you all this space up here. So under the hood is basically everything you might need to access. I love how easy everything is to get to. There's the battery. There's your breather box right there. So you also know how high the water can go on the R-Max. And then there's your coolant reservoir right there. So, you know, three things that you might need to get to, you can. Now over here, it looks like some kind of worn winch controller. It's a couple fuses and uh, looks like some relays over there too you can get to. Um, but anyways, those three things, coolant, breather, and battery. Nice that they're really easy to access under just one hood. Oh, and the radiator as well. When you take the hood off, you can get right down to your rad and clean it up in case it's uh, gummed up with something. 
Okay, now we can take a look inside this RMAX. So first of all, we do have a brand new set of doors here. They're uh, a little bit heavier than on just the X2. They feel a little bit more substantial. And something that I like, knee padding. That's a nice knee pad right there. And they've also added a nice knee pad right there. So when you're sitting in this model, your knees aren't just banging against hard plastic. Now, this is probably the most important thing I need to show you. Yes, this model now has different drive modes. So you get sport mode trail mode and crawl mode and each one is going to affect how this RMAX puts its power down. So if you put it in trail mode, you're going to get smooth acceleration, linear throttle response, and full engine braking. Sport mode, powerful acceleration, quick throttle, and smooth engine braking. And then in crawl mode, you're talking about smooth acceleration, moderate throttle response, and full-on engine braking to make sure you can go out there and go rock crawling. So it's pretty cool that Yamaha has offered you that switch so you can really tailor your ride here. Now, over here on the left, we have our two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and diff lock. This model has a fully locked up rear end, and then that diff lock is going to lock up your front differential, and then, of course, the switch for your lights. Now, down here in the center stack, we have a cutout up top here. Now, you can actually get a screen to fit in here if you want. Our model doesn't have it, so we just get this blank cutout. Look at all those switches that could be used. Again, we just get blanks here. And then down there, that is to control your winch up front. Now, on the passenger side, I want to point out what looks to be a really handy little shelf down here. I love having storage spots like that. Let's see what's up with the glove box. Oh, the glove box actually has a push button on it now. These glove boxes have just been sort of, you know, rubber uh, pins pushed in for a while. This one actually has a proper push button. I like that quite a bit. And then a redesigned passenger grab handle. A lot beefier than it was before and uh, I'm not even sure how exactly you adjust it. Oh, it's over here. So this is a pressure-based system which means you can adjust it to any spot you want it and then it will lock right in. Now talking about just the seats themselves, the seats have been a little bit redesigned. They're not too different from what was in the X2. I think they're bolstered a little heavier, but sitting in my seat here, I feel nice and comfortable and I fit in here okay as well. Now our model does have a roof on it and we get that nice big rear view mirror. That's super handy, especially for when you're out there riding with friends. Uh, a couple other little things in here. The steering wheel does have tilt adjustment. Of course, I can't really do it with while holding the camera, but you can probably see it there. Um, the steering wheel, you can move up and down. And what's always handy is the screen actually moves with it. I like when that happens, just keeps it right at the right eye level for you. Uh, another thing, a parking brake. Love having a real physical parking brake. A lot of machines just use park in the transmission and don't give you a parking brake at all. Now, ingress and egress, really, really simple. So nice and easy to get in and out of this thing, even for a big guy. So our towing capacity here is 2,000 pounds. Really nice number for a machine like this. And yes, that is a two inch hitch receiver. So you can just take the hitch directly out of your truck, throw it in there, and you'll be good to go. Now, besides the towing number, let me read off some other numbers. So the bed capacity, capacity here is 600 pounds and the wet weight of the entire machine is 1,876 pounds. Now I can also mention um, some other off-road numbers. So the ground clearance of the RMAX is 13.8 inches, super respectable. The width, as I mentioned, 64. Height comes in at 77.8 inches and uh, the length of this machine is 119.3 inches. Now fuel capacity is 35 liters. And then finally, if you want to talk about the warranty, well, you're getting a one year unlimited mileage warranty, but then even the, the cool one than that is a 10 year CVT belt warranty. If you buy a brand new Yamaha, they guarantee the belt in your CVT for 10 years. That's the only company to do that, and that is a seriously cool feature. Now we have to talk pricing, and we'll start with Canadian. So, this is the model you just looked at here. And yes, in Canada, we call it the SE, even though in the States it's the XTR. I'm not sure why. And the starting price on that model is $26,799. The most expensive RMAX is the four seater costing nearly 30 grand. And then the base RMAX two seater is right here and it comes in at 
$299. Of course, the less powerful 850 is still available too, and these models also have smaller tires, less ground clearance. This is sort of the old Wolverine chassis. It's still available though, and the base model here, in Canada at least, starts at $18,699, and then of course you still have the Viking. Now looking at the US, we'll start right here with the RMAX 21000. It starts at $19,799 US. Moving over, this is the model we just looked at in our video. It comes in at $21,999. There's also this limited edition model in the States. And then, of course, you have the four-seaters, the most expensive of which is right here, coming in at $25,299. So, everybody, I think that's just about it on this brand new R-Max. How's it going to perform? Well, you're going to have to come back to find out. Sorry for the tease, everybody, but there's just so much to talk about. I like doing a walk around video so we can really look at the details and that leaves me free just to drive like a crazy man when it comes time for the full review. So like I said, that is it for this one. Why don't you guys go below right now, let me know what you think of the R-Max, let me know what you want to see in the full review and if I didn't answer some of your questions, I will go out of my way to make sure I do. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we are testing next. See ya.